Hi everyone, welcome to IT Projects Ideas. In this project, we will make a temperature and humidity monitoring and control system using ESP32 Wi-Fi module and view data on Blink IoT app. There are many potential applications for an IoT-based temperature and humidity control system. Some examples include controlling the temperature and humidity in a greenhouse. Maintaining optimal condition in a mushroom grow room. Regulating temperature for humidity in a wine cellar. Creating the perfect conditions for aging cheese. Keeping a server room at the optimal temperature and humidity for equipment performance. Maintaining the ideal conditions for drying and storing foods. Optimizing the conditions for storing and displaying museum artifacts. And regulating the temperature and humidity in a laboratory or commercial buildings, etc. By the end of this tutorial, I will show you how this small device helped me to grow mushrooms in extremely low temperatures. To measure temperature and humidity of surroundings, I am using a cheap and easily available DST Lavin sensor. The 0.96 inch OLED display will display the Blink IoT connection status, current temperature and humidity, operating mode, temperature set value, and humidity set value. The Blink app will show you DS211 sensor data, current temperature and humidity. Using the Blink IoT app, we can also set temperature and humidity threshold values using these sliders. Additionally, you can switch between auto and manual mode as well. In auto mode, the heating and humidifying devices are automatically turned on and off in order to maintain a target temperature and humidity level. When the system is in auto mode, it continuously reads the current temperature and humidity levels from a sensor and compares them to the target temperature and humidity levels. If the current temperature is below the target temperature, the heating device is turned on. If the current temperature is above the target temperature, the heating device is turned off. Similarly, if the current humidity is below the target humidity, the humidifying device is turned on. If the current humidity is above the target humidity, the humidifying device is turned off. The user can toggle the system between auto mode and manual mode using a mobile app. When the system is in manual mode, the heating and humidifying devices are controlled manually by the user, rather than being automatically turned on and off to maintain a target temperature and humidity level. When the system is in manual mode, the user can turn on the heating and humidifying devices on or off using a mobile app as well as dedicated physical buttons. To make this project more practical, I have added three push buttons to control the device locally. It comes in handy when you don't have a mobile phone or your system is not connected to the internet because this device works even in offline mode. The first green button allows the user to switch between modes. The other two red and blue buttons allow the user to control the heating and humidifying devices. Next, interesting features in this project is, it uses the preferences library to access the device EPROM and Save on or off state of the heating and humidifying device, auto or manual mode of the system, target temperature and humidity. This allows the device to remember its previous states and settings even if it is powered off. 
The program reads the values from EEPROM when it starts off and uses them to set the initial state of the heating and humidifying devices. So, without further delay, let's get started with hardware you will need for this project. ESP32 Wi-Fi module DS211 temperature and humidity sensor 0.96 inch OLED display 2 channel relay module 3 push buttons Mist maker Bulb with holder. Use 100 watt halogen bulb to produce more heat. Zero PCB board and jumper cables. Now that we have all of the materials that we need, let's start by setting up the hardware. First, connect the OLED display to the ESP32 using I2C, ESTL and ESTA pins to D22 and D21 pins. Next, connect the DS211 sensor to the ESP32 D23 pin. Then, connect the two channel relay to the ESP32 D18 and D19 pins. While VCC is connected to the VIN pin for a 5 volt power supply. Interface buttons to D25, D26 and D27 pins respectively. Connect all GND pins to GND and VCC pins to the 3.3V pin of the ESP32 Wi-Fi module. Now we have set up our hardware. To test the project, you can use breadboard assembly. But if you want to implement this project on your home electric board, then I recommend you to use a zero PCV or use a custom PCV to avoid any loose connections and short circuits. I have already designed a custom PCV for this project. You can go to the download links to download the project Garber file and order directly from PCBWay.com. Because PCBWay is one stop solution for all your PCV needs like PCB prototyping, assembly stencils, PCV assembly, etc. So get your first prototype PCV ready from PCBWay.com. The link is in the description below. Just click on the PCV Instant Quick tab. Then click on Quick Order PCV. Now upload your Garver file. Select your preferred shipping method and place your order. Let's set up the IoT part of this project. First, we will set up the Blink dashboard. Sign up using your Blink email and password and then create a new template. Assign a name, hardware and connection type to the template. From the web dashboard, create 8 widgets. 1. Level widget. 2. Gauze widgets. 2. Slider widgets. And 3. Button widgets. You can resize, drag and drop the widgets to your desired location. For the level widget, Choose the virtual pin V0 and set the data type to string. This will be used to display custom text messages. For the current temperature, display in the gauge. Select the virtual pin V2 and set the data type to double. Set the units to degree Celsius and the maximum value to 50. Similarly, for the current humidity, Select the virtual pin V3 and set the data type to double. Set the units to percentage and the maximum value to 100. For the set temperature slider, assign the virtual pin V4 and set the data type to integer. This slider is used to set the temperature threshold value. Similarly, for the set humidity slider widget, assign the virtual pin V5. Set the data type to integer and set the maximum value to 100%. It is used to set the humidity threshold value. 
Now configure the button for switching modes. Name the widget Auto Mode and assign the virtual pin V1. Set the data type to integer. If this button is in the off state, the device will be set to manual mode. To turn the heater on and off, assign the virtual pin V6 and set the data type to integer. Finally, to control the humidifier, assign the virtual pin V7 and save the data type to integer. Click Save to save the entire setup. In addition to the web dashboard, you can also set up your mobile app dashboard. We will set up the Blink mobile dashboard after adding the device to the newly created template and uploading the program code. To add a new device to your Blink dashboard, Click on the search icon and then select Add New Device. From the options that appear, choose from Template and select the template you want to choose. Give your device a name and click Create. A new device will be added to your dashboard. You can find the code header file. Copy this code and then paste it into your program code. This will include the template ID, device name, and authentication token. This is the program code for the IoT temperature and humidity monitoring and control system with ESP32 and Blink 2.0. You can find this program code, step-by-step -step program code explanation, Blink setup guide, and a circuit diagram on our website. I will attach the link in the description. Apart from this, update the Wi-Fi SSID and password from here. You can install the required library from the link provided in the description. After necessary customization, it's time to upload code to this ESP32. To upload the program code, select the ESP32 dev kit P1 board and the correct COM port from the tools menu. Click the upload button to upload the code. The code will take some time to compile. After compilation is complete, press the boot button on ESP32 for a few seconds. Then the upload process will be started. Once the code is uploaded, the device is ready for testing. The ESP32 will try to connect to the Wi Fi network. Once it is connected, it will connect to the Blink platform using the Blink authentication token. Now let's set up the Blink IoT dashboard for mobile phones. First, download and install the Blink app from Play Store or App Store. After installing the application, log into your account. You will see a new device, IoT Temperature and Humidity Controller. Click on it and start configuring the mobile dashboard. As done on the web dashboard, I have used one level widget, two gauze widgets, two slider widgets, and three button widgets. See this video for the step-by-step -step configuration and setup of each widget used in this project. So that's all for the mobile dashboard setup. Now the same data can also be viewed from the Blink IoT app or the Blink web dashboard from any location in the world. I have already discussed the useful features of this device. Let's see how this system helps to grow mushrooms in low temperature conditions. It is very important to maintain the optimal temperature and humidity levels for growing mushrooms, as these conditions can greatly affect the success of the cultivation process. By using this IoT-based temperature and humidity control system, you can easily monitor and regulate the conditions in your mushroom grow room, ensuring that your mushrooms have the best chance of growing and thriving. With the ability to remotely monitor and control the conditions in your grow room, you can fine-tune the temperature and humidity levels to meet the specific needs of your mushroom variety, even in low-temperature environments.
by following these steps outlined in this tutorial. You can learn how to set up and use an IoT-based temperature and humidity control system to grow your own mushrooms at home. For more information about the project, including device details, purchase links, the source code, and a written guide, visit the IoT Projects Ideas website. If you have any other questions, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.